Hi YouTube, Zmanzilla here. Recently I discussed some changes I'd be making to my review schedule. I mentioned some of those reasons, but I avoided one of the main ones, and it's a topic I hope to focus on here, just to get it off my chest. Now, before I get rolling here, I'll just mention that I'm still relatively new to the whole YouTube thing in general, and doing SnapMap videos thing specifically. I realize some of the things I'm about to bring up are old hat to folks that do snap map videos, and I'm sure they're all going to watch this with just a hint of amusement, if nothing else, and you know what? That's fine. I only know things from my own point of view, so being late to the party means I'm going to make some observations that seem fresh and new to me, but not so much to others. Hopefully, those folks will feel inclined to share their experiences in the comments, as well as their preferred methods for dealing with them. Anyways. Let's cut to the chase. Over the past month or so, I've been on the receiving end of map creators that I like to call pimp snappers. These are folks that visit snap map focused YouTube channels with a focus of getting their maps played by the channel creators. Now, obviously not everyone that asks to have a map played falls under that pimp snapper category, and I don't even think pimp snapping is itself a bad thing. You know, if you have an original creation and you're willing to take the risks that come with exposing your work to a wider audience, then sure, by all means, promote your maps and try to get them played on Twitch and YouTube. However, there's a fine line between healthy promotion and being a self-serving obnoxious bugbear. I'll illustrate this by bringing up two recent examples of pimp snapping, one good and one bad. In the good example, the map creator made a comment on one of my videos. The comment started off with some kind words for the map I'd covered in the video, and then segued into the creator's sales pitch for his map. He explained what he thought I'd like about the map, and ended his spiel with a map ID. His comments were respectful to the map I just covered, they were respectful of my time, and they were made with what appeared at least to be an understanding of how my videos work and what sort of things I discuss in them, both good and bad. I feel that this is a perfect example of pimp snapping done right. In the bad example, the map creator also commented on a video. However, the comment contained nothing about the video being posted on, making it, if nothing else, completely off topic. It was just a flat request to have me play their map. The request was short, didn't include a map ID, and contained no indication whatsoever that the map creator understood what sort of videos I do. This misunderstanding became especially clear in their later responses to my feedback, which were, to say the least, far from grateful for my coverage. Regular followers of my channel might also recall a certain recent incident, which represents the very worst aspect of pimp snapping. To summarize, I was harassed during a live stream in a manner so disruptive that it ruined the playthrough of the map I was covering at the time. This was followed up by some abusive replies in my comments section, as well as other socially awkward issues I've had to deal with as recently as um, several hours ago. All of this energy in the hopes of getting a map played on YouTube. So why do people do this? Okay, okay, I probably shouldn't play so dumb, let's face it, it's fun to see your work being played on video by someone else. They do things you didn't expect people would do, and in some cases, you get to hear and even see them react to all those little things you put in the map to get reactions from people. There's also the chance of having your work appreciated by a global audience, the recognition you get from being a visible part of the SnapMap community, and if I was a betting man, I'd also bet there's an element of hoping you get famous in there for some people. You know, there's a lot of legit reasons why someone would choose to pimp snap their maps, and I don't begrudge that. What I will say, though, is that there's a right way to pimp snap and a wrong way to pimp snap, and it's well worth your time to consider this. After all, this is the internet. You can delete your comments all day, but even if people weren't keeping screenshots, and oh, by the way, I always keep screenshots, the community will remember you and your behavior for quite some time. So here are some tips to the intrepid pimp snappers out there. Keep in mind these are suggestions based on my own opinion and experience, however, I do feel that these tips are pretty universal. Number one, request with respect. If you're commenting on a video of someone else's play, you know, try and include something about that map in your comment. The creator of that map is looking for the same recognition you are. If you're commenting on a discussion video or something that's only related to SnapMap, then join the conversation at hand. Posting a SnapMap play request that has nothing to do with the topic is disrespectful to the time of the video creator and map creator. You're basically sending the message that the only use you have for that video is as a way to promote yourself. And really, who would want to help someone like that get more exposure? Number two, 
identify the player. Every YouTuber and Twitch streamer has different review styles. Some are going to give you a score, others, like me, are just going to give in-depth feedback, and still others are going to just play your map and that's it. Some folks love the puppet show stuff, you know, like Sanctum of Doom. Others, like myself, aren't quite as into that, and, you know, the same differential goes for puzzles, secret hunting, and specific combat scenarios. Every YouTuber also has different skill levels, different areas of interest, different tastes, and, willi- and a different level of willingness to speak up about the things they didn't like. If you aren't aware of what those things are, then you really have no excuse for getting indignant or snotty in the comments when they don't agree with your vision. You know, I'm always a little baffled by pimp snappers who request a review and then seem surprised that I talk at length about the issues I encountered and the things I didn't like, which is literally the point of my channel. It's something they'd know if they were familiar with my Snap Map review series. Number three, prepare for the worst. Now, in your mind, your snap map is awesome. It represents the culmination of your hard work, all the new skills you learned, your creative vision, and so much more. You understand everything about your map. You like your map. You may even love your map. However, to the person doing the review, your map is, well, just another snap map. The map has to prove itself on its own merits, both as a strong standalone experience and in comparison to every other map the YouTuber has played before yours. And because of that, there's always a chance that they aren't going to feel the same way about your map as you do. If you get some negativity, you know, just suck it up, learn from it, and move on. It's not the end of the world. It isn't even the end of your snap map experience. It's just some feedback. It can't kill you in your sleep. Number four, say thank you. (laughs) Now, if someone takes the time to play your map and then put it on YouTube, you know, even if it's a bad review, the very least you can do, the very least, is watch the whole review and thank them for their time. Telling them what secrets they missed, you know, that's optional. So is explaining or justifying the things they didn't like. But really, it's so very important to acknowledge that you at least appreciate the time and effort someone devoted on your behalf. The time they spent recording your play, you know, that's time they could have been spending recording someone else, or making their own maps, or, you know what, even just making a sandwich. You know, these are all things that are more rewarding than getting snubbed by impolite pimp snappers. Remember, the Snap Map community is a group of creators just like you, so treat them the way you want to be treated. Number five, make maps worth pimp snapping. You know, let's... Let's just get right to the point here. If you're the kind of mapper that is proud of being able to throw together a map in 10 minutes, or you're the kind of mapper that thinks people sit through three minutes of loading screens so they can watch you fart around with world text and AI path points, then you really have no business pimp snapping. You need to watch more videos and play more maps. Figure out what it is that popular mappers offer other players. Design maps with the philosophy that someone other than you is going to have to play this thing and ask yourself, what am I giving them in exchange for their time? And really, this shouldn't need to be said, but if it takes someone more time to play your map than it took you to make it, just don't bother. And finally, number six, remember you can always do it yourself. Now, if all you're looking for is a video, then really it isn't too hard to make one yourself. The PS4 and Xbox One both offer streaming and recording options, not to mention all the recording options available for PC. I mean, seriously, recording your plays is often as easy as just creating a Twitch account, and getting them onto YouTube isn't even that much more work. If you don't know how to get your plays from your console to YouTube, then just ask in the comments and I'll share the surprisingly simple secret. So those are all the tips I've come up with, but what are some other pieces of advice you'd give a pimp snapper? Maybe you want to show them how it's done by sending me a snap map review request? Go ahead and drop me a note in the comments section and let's have this discussion. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.